Joining me now from Los Angeles, all-time basketball great Magic Johnson, who uh, made that announcement in 1991. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How do you Everything explain is great. it? Uh, you are HIV positive. You've never contracted AIDS, right? Right. How do you right. explain it, Magic? Well, the virus acts different than everybody. So if you have the virus and I have the virus, that, that doesn't mean that uh, you're going to... Uh, if you get AIDS, that don't mean I'm going to get AIDS. So it acts different than everybody. It attacks everybody's immune system differently. Uh, my immune system is very strong. And I think because of my frame of mind and I work out and the medicine as well. How much? You take a lot of medication? No, not a lot at all. Only two. Two, two uh, different types of medicine. Uh, they got a combination, as they call it, cocktail. And that's it. Twice a day. That's it. Why did you go public with it? Well, because of probably all those stories that you just ran before I came on, it's just to help other people to let them know how big AIDS is and how uh, people are not only, I think at that time everybody thought it was just a gay person's disease and no, it's, it's, a, it's a everybody's disease. And that's why I wanted to come out to help other people and to help uh, educate people about HIV and AIDS. Do you remember your first reaction, Magic, when you were told you were HIV positive? Oh, no question about it. I was devastated. Um, they had called me back from a road trip in Utah. We were playing an exhibition game there. And uh, he called me in and uh, the doctor, Dr. Melman, sat me down and told me that I had the HIV virus. And, um, you know, you just almost just hit the floor. But I was more worried, not about myself, as much as I was Cookie and my baby, because at that time, uh, Cookie was pregnant with our son, EJ. As, is EJ fine? Yeah, EJ is fine and Cookie is fine. And you have no indication of AIDS at all, right? No, no, not at all. Not even close. Do you fear you're going to get it? No, no. I, I'm never worried about that one moment of all of this. You know, what is it, nine years yeah. from, uh, you know, later? And uh, because I work out every day, I take my medicine, but my frame of mind, I've never thought one moment that I was going to die, and uh, I've always have met every challenge in my life, and I think because I came out, that was probably the most important thing, because I didn't have to live with that inside, because a lot of, a lot of times what the doctors say, you must keep stress out of your life, and I think when I announced, that kept all the stress out of my life. I know you're an activist now. Do you think the sense of urgency is faded in this country that people aren't as worried about it as they were five, six years ago? Um, I, I think you're right uh, because uh, it, it was almost like it was the thing then. Yeah. And it's, it's not the thing now. But if you look, uh, the numbers are still up there. And then it don't even look in our country, you look in Africa and some of these other countries, and this is even worse. I mean, a hundred times worse in Africa. So uh, I think, too, what's the educational part is uh, the government got involved and educated people. Uh, they made more drugs available for people, and uh, that's helped, but we still need to do more. It's an epidemic in South Africa. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. And uh, uh, you don't see how they're going to rebound from it either. I mean, it just, it keeps getting passed on and on and on. And, uh, you, you know, you almost cringe to say, uh, how can we help? And uh, you just don't know how. You can. And you think your personality's had a lot to do with it. You're oh, always upbeat Magic Johnson. <laughs> no question about it. I, I, I know it has. Um, uh, because I, I just kept going. I kept living. And uh, I think a lot of people, when they find out, find out they have the virus, they stop living. They give up. Um, not you. Not me. <laughs> not at all. And uh, I think Elizabeth Glazier really helped me out yeah. a lot. Thanks so much, Magic. Always great seeing you. And uh, happy anniversary to you, too. Thank you. All right. Still ahead, ABC's Peter Jennings and a lot more. It was March 24th when North America experienced its worst ever oil spill. More than 10 million gallons of crude spewed into the waters of Prince William Sound, polluting hundreds of miles of pristine shoreline and killing thousands of birds and hundreds of sea animals. I guess the biggest thing that really struck me about being there was on the one side the environmental impact and devastation that it caused and at the same time seeing 
the most beautiful sights I'd ever seen in my entire life. It was very, a very stark contrast of looking at water that's polluted with oil and looking up and seeing the most beautiful mountains. It's like being in heaven almost. When this oil spill happens to such a beautiful place, the calamity got bigger and bigger and bigger. Scientists say they do not know and may not know for months how many animals died as a result of the spill. And they say it may be years before they know if or how well those populations bounced back. At some point in time, the cleanup operation that seemed immense and watching hundreds if not thousands of people along shoreline with sponges and towels in their hands picking up rocks and washing them off and putting them down and picking up another one and when you looked and would see an entire coastline blackened think it's going to take them forever you know, they'll never get this done it clearly will take months of massive effort to restore the natural beauty of this wondrous part of the world and possibly years before the wounds of this man-made disaster begin to heal. Greg Lamont, CNN, Valdez, Alaska.